Okay, so family. Okay, so I've had a lot of requests to go back to recording my videos like this. <laughs> so apparently you guys miss my face. <laughs> so Per your requests, here I am back in front of the camera doing the videos like this. <laughs> I have prepared myself well. I have my tea. <laughs> so, today we are going to be doing a character traits video, which means I will be giving you character traits of your twin soul or soulmates, your person, whatever it is that you would like to call your person. Everyone has different labels. I prefer twin soul because to me, a soulmate is different than a twin soul. A twin soul literally has the same blueprint DNA as your soul. Um, so your souls are basically a exact energy frequency match. You guys basically have the same soul. It's just in different bodies, right? Um, but your souls are mirrors. And a soulmate can be anyone. A soulmate can be your best friend. It can be someone that you marry. It can be, you know, your, your, um, your friend, um, and it can be platonic, but it can also be romantic, but they do not share the same soul as you. So the love will not be as intense as if you were with your twin soul. And then some people, you know, don't even strive for even the twin soul or the soulmates and they just pick someone that they like. And that's okay too. I'm not judging anyone. We're all on our own separate journeys. So, that being said, we're going to do this in piles. We're going to do pile number one, pile number two, and pile number three. So, the first pile we're going to start with is pile number one. Um, and I will have, um, you know, different links for all of them. So, we're going to start out with pile number one, your character traits to look out for in your person. We are going to start out with this deck, the Heal Yourself reading cards, okay? First, can we get some cards for pile number one, Spirit? <clears throat> can we get some character traits for all of the people who picked pile number one? Can we get some character traits for all of the people who chose... Pile number one, character traits collectively of their person. Now, some or all of this reading may resonate with you. Like I said, this is a collective energy read. It's not going to be as accurate as if it was a personal reading where I'm connecting with your energy. Um, so just keep that in mind. One second. Okay, can we get some character traits for all those who chose pile number one, please, Spirit? Character traits for all those who chose pile number one. Ooh, this tea is making me sweaty. But I love how it's giving me a little blush to my cheeks. I have no makeup on. I have eyeliner on. Hold on. <laughs> I have like this weird thing my hair's doing. I have eyeliner on. And chapstick. All right. Character traits for pile number one, please. Oh, this beauty is natural. Character traits for pile number one, please. Character traits of their person. 
character traits of their person, please. Character traits of their person. Whoa. Okay. So this person, you will immediately know them because when you meet this person, they will immediately feel like home. Wow. Okay. They will immediately feel like home to you. There will be a sense of comfort that you have never felt with anyone else. Um, this connection feels very twin solely. So it feels like right now, pile number one, um, if you have picked pile number one, then this definitely, the energy feels already right off the bat, very much like a twin soul mirrored connection. So this person, when you come across them, like I said, it's going to feel immediately like you guys have known each other before. The connection will feel very comfortable. You'll be able to be yourself with this person. Um, also, this person, you will know them. Um, their energy will be very scorpionic, meaning they will have this sort of... Um, well, the card is Phoenix rising. So they will have this sort of very scorpionic rise from the ashes type feel. When you get to talking to them, you will realize very quickly that they have been through a lot of stuff. So they will, when they start telling you things about their life, there will be a lot of things very similar to yours where you'll be like, wow, I can't believe you went through that. And it's because they had to go through a significant amount of trauma, so to speak, in order to become the moral character that they are now. Does that make sense? So they will have went through a, a great deal of traumatic things, whether it's childhood trauma or you know, adult trauma, you know, whatever it is, car accidents, deaths, um, parents dying um, early in life, feeling abandoned, things like that. Um, there will be a lot, you will notice a lot of significant trauma. And all of it, though, they will have healed on their own. Okay. So this is a very powerful person and they are definitely aware of their own power okay y'all i'm back so pile number one like i said um your person is going to feel very comfortable to you the first card that i pulled for your connection was home I also feel like if you've already came in contact with this person, you might be going through a period right now where there's a lot of changes. Uh, there's a lot of fives in these cards. Their energy also feels very passionate. There's a card if you want to see it. All right. Let's get some more character traits for your person. Pile number one, please. Pile number one, character traits for their person. Ooh, this shirt is itching me for some reason. Pile number one, character traits for their person. Pile number one, character traits for their person, please. Pile number one, character traits for their person, please. Pile number one, character traits for their person. Ooh. so if you've came in contact with this person and I feel like you have all of the cards are pointing to that you guys probably already met so if you've met them and they've said to you the answer is not right now but soon or you feel like they're even putting you on the back burn so to speak um, because they got they do have a lot going on in their life right now it's not that they don't why you or they're attracted they're not attracted to you it's that they have a whole lot of trauma healing that they're doing right now and so now it feels like they cannot see it feels like they cannot give their full attention to this connection but 
They are a very loving soul. So we got the answer is not right now, but soon. So they may have told you this already. They may have said, you know, um, that something along the lines of I want to test this connection or, you know, I want to take this further. But they may have said, I, but I have a lot going on right now or something along those lines. So that's how you'll know that that's your person. But they do have a very loving demeanor. And so you may, that may be what is keeping you connected to this connection because you do feel that they are not um, necessarily a spiteful person. They just truly have a lot going on in their life right now. Okay, so let's get some more character traits for your person. Character traits for pile number one. For the people that picked pile number one, can we get some more character traits for their person, please? Character traits for pile number one, please. Character traits for pile number one. Okay. Character traits for pile number one, please. Character traits for pile number one. Oh. Wow. So if you picked pile number one, your person is extremely breathtakingly beautiful. So they might have the type of face that is like perfectly symmetrical. Um, they might even do modeling or um, if they don't, they're just extremely attractive and pleasing to the eye. Very Libra type energy. Very Libra Capricorn type energy. Okay, one more character trait, please. All right, so we have choice. So this is the card of beauty, like I said. So your person is either an Adonis or a Venus or an Aphrodite. <laughs> They're extremely attractive. Um, and then we have choice. So this feels like your person either has recently um, told you that they had to come to a hard decision about something. They've either said to you, I had to make a really hard decision about this or that. I mean, and, and I'm just giving an example. So say, for example, they've said something to you like, I recently had to... Um, make a decision about whether or not I was going to keep this job or to stay or whether or not I was going to move to this location or whatever. So that will be an indication that this is your person. Also, I feel like they can also be a little bit indecisive. So if, if you've had that conversation with them and it went something like, well, I had to make a decision whether or not to move to this place or to stay and I'm really having a hard time with it, I feel like that's how you'll know also that this is your person because I feel a very sort of indecisive energy coming from your person. So they might be, um, it might be really hard for them to come to decisions, um, especially if it's like a, a, a decision on something that's like extremely important to them. I feel like they will struggle in those areas. Um, so, and they might have Pisces in their chart. It's so funny because I was about to say they might have some kind of Pisces in their natal chart. And as soon as I said that, I looked down and it looks like she's holding a fish. I didn't notice it until I looked down and seen, I don't know if you could see that, but it kind of looks like she's holding a fish. See? It's funny. So, okay. So that'll be another sign. Um, let's move on to, we're going to move on to the Who Oracle to give you some more character traits. And then we're going to move on to your shadow aspects of your person. And then I will give you some insights as to possibly how you can run into your person for those of you who have not ran into your person yet. Okay, so can we get some more character traits for pile one, please? Can we get three more character traits for pile one, please? 
can we get three more character traits for pile one um pile one um if you picked pile one i also do feel like your person is extremely intelligent because i just got an image of a dolphin in my mind and to me dolphins represents intelligence in fact i think one of the cards in the who oracle is actually a dolphin and it says intelligent and so i just got that mental image of a dolphin in my head and i don't know if they're pisces or not but their their energy feels very water sign ish so they're either a scorpio or a pisces is what it feels like Three more character traits for pile one, please. Three more character traits for pile one, please. Ooh, that one flew out. Okay, your person loves animals. They absolutely love animals. So I would see them working in... Hold on a second. Okay, sorry about that. There's something in the inside of my shirt that keeps poking me. Okay, so I would see them either working as a veterinarian or volunteering at an animal hospital they might be a vet tech they could be a veterinarian or a vet tech um if they don't do that they're they would be someone who has a lot of animals um if they don't have a lot of animals they would be someone who literally like if you're outside you see a, a bird that's wounded they would be the type of person that would take that bird and bring it inside and nurture it back to health they would be the type of person that if they hit a deer on this, you know, they would make sure that the deer was okay before they took off in the car. Um, you know, possibly put it down or whatever they had to do to end the animal's suffering. Um, they would be the type of person that would call, um, you know, the DNR if they saw an animal that was injured and needed to be rehabilitated. Um, something like that. Uh, they could possibly have a dog or a cat or multiple um, dogs or cats. They could have both. And not just like, you know, the normal domesticated pets. I mean, they could have any type of pet from lizards to snakes to bugs. Um, anything like that. Whoa, your person also really, really loves to cook. So they are extremely, this isn't just like, I sort of like to cook every once in a while on the weekends, like macaroni and cheese. This card is a culinary arts card. So your person, I mean, look at that dish. Your person, um, they could have possibly went to culinary school at one time in their life. Um, they might, you know, Google recipes and figure out how to make them. They might watch, you know, um, recipe videos on YouTube and cook for you. Like they have a passion for food and a passion for cooking. And it's funny, I also get um, this energy of they might have a tendency because they love to cook and they love food and the richness of food. They might worry about their weight often. Um, they might go to the gym often because the, the fact that they do love food so much, they might, you know, work out because they like food and they want to keep their body fit. Although I see that you are not worried at all about your person's a physique. I, I feel that your energy says you find them very sexy. We also have LGBTQT. So for some of you, this is definitely a um, same sex twin relationship. So because LGBT stands for lesbian, gay, bi, queer, trans. So for some of you, this will literally be a same-sex relationship, as in two males, um, two females in love with each other. Um, it could be your person is bisexual, and when they, they will come straight out and tell you, look, you know, I like men and women. 
um, your person could have been a different gender in in the past. So, for instance, when you guys start talking, your person, you know, will let you know, well, hey, I used to be a male or hey, I used to be a female. There's something like that along the lines in this connection. So take that how it resonates. Pile number one, if if that's or if you chose pile number one, then that's your story. All right, let's get the shadow aspects of your person. All right, and then for those of you that, um, I also just heard there could be some kind of polyamorous um, connection there. So, for example, your person doesn't have a sexual preference. They don't like males, females. They would like um, all genders. So, and not it's not even really about the gender for them. So for this person, it would be like, I love souls. So whether that soul is in a male or female body, it doesn't matter to me. If I like that person and I like the aspects of their soul, then I'm going to love that person. So for them, they wouldn't look at the gender of the person. The gender of the person would not matter to them. They would just love the person as a whole. And that's how I am. So, I mean, it's, and for me, it's never been about, it's, it's never been about sexuality or you're this or you're that or you're whatever. It's, I love souls. I love the souls of people. So for example, if I'm in love with someone's soul and they're in the body of a female, that's not going to deter me from, from being like, oh, I can't, you know, love you because you're in the body of a female and, you know, I'm attracted to your soul. So and so I, I don't even know what that they would even call that type of um, <laughs> fluidity in, 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 you know, in your sexuality. So, but I mean, I think it's called like polyamorous where you just, well, I think polyamorous is when you love like more than one person at a time. Um, so that's not really what it would be. Um, I don't know. If you know what the term is for that, you can just you can comment down below because I, I don't know. <laughs> All right, so let's do the, oh my gosh, I'm starting to get hot drinking this tea. Ah, I have my fan going and I'm still sweating. Okay, so let's do the shadow aspects of your person. These are possible shadows that your person might show you, you know, so just be on the lookout for those if they do appear. Then they will help you to better deal with the shadow aspects of your person. Whoa. Pile number one, please. Pile number one. What do we got for pile number one? Shadow aspects. Can we get two cards for shadow aspects, please? Okay, that one flew out. What do we got? We have alchemy. So your person could have a really hard time alchemizing their emotions. They might um, be someone who, when they feel a negative emotion, they have a really hard time flipping it and alchemizing it into positivity. So they might be the type of person that, like, they when when they get into a negative funk, they stay in that negative funk for a while. You know, they just. That's where they that's where they have trouble learning how to shift into that different magnetic, I mean alchemical field. Because when you alchemize your emotions, basically what you're doing is you're taking uh, an emotion and flipping it or changing it into a different emotion which will better serve you. So they might not be able to do that as well. That may be something that you're excellent at. And when you get with this person, you will show them how to sort of get out of those negative funks and basically how to alchemize their emotions. So you will teach them how to take a negative emotion and turn it into a positive thing or to learn from it. And then we also have the, the high priestess. So your person also has trouble with their intuition so they might have a really high intuition but they might have they might 
have trouble listening to their intuition. They're not as intuitive as you. So generally that will happen in the divine masculine energy fields. Um, the divine feminine will be very intuitive and very in tune with her emotions and her intuition. And the divine masculine energy field will sort of feel like they don't really understand those those intuitive taps. One second. Okay, sorry about that. I had a child interruption. Okay, so let's continue. Um, so... They basically, I can't remember where I was now. Um, they might not be as in tuned with their intuition as you are. So that might be another thing that you have to teach them into, or you might have to show them how to trust their own intuition. Because I feel like they're not confident enough to um stand fully in their power because of this um intuition thing they are definitely a powerful being i can feel their energy feels very loving very kind very much independent very much in their power but yet they're not fully stepping into their power because they have this point where they are are doubting their um, connection to their intuition. So they might not feel confident um, guiding themselves because they feel like those deep gut feelings that they feel might not be as accurate. And they really are. So, okay. So now for those of you that haven't met this person yet. And so I just want to say that this energy that I'm reading for right now feels like I might be reading for a divine feminine. And this person that I'm giving you character traits for is probably going to be the divine masculine aspect, um, polar opposite of you. So, <clears throat> all right. So let's, um, for those of you that have not met this person yet, can we give them some insight into possibly where they will meet this person? Or, you know, a time period in their life, a timeline stamp so that pile number one can know about when to be looking out for this person in their life. One card for this, please, Fair. Okay, so it is going to come at a time in your life when you feel very much, <laughs> um, you're probably not going to like this, but you feel very much like giving up and you're going to be in a deep grip of like a dark night of the soul it's going to be a point in your life when you literally feel like you've hit rock bottom. And it's going to be at this point in your life when you will literally surrender to the divine. And it's that moment that you hit your knees and you say, I cannot do this anymore. I'm done. I, I need some help. Um, I need some guidance. And which is going to be, which is going to feel like a very foreign emotion to you because I feel like you don't really go to these areas in your life. Like you're really um, independent and, you know, it's hard for you to sort of um, literally surrender, right? But the thing is, it's, and I don't feel like it's because you're in your ego. I just feel like you, you're you strong because you've had to be strong. And so, you know, you were basically forced into being your own um, cheerleader and soulmates and twin soul. And, you know, some of you may even be raising kids alone. 
you're very independent. So some of you may have been on your own and, you know, since you were uh, very um, young. So for some of you, literally, it, it'll be like you've been living on your own since you were 14, 15. And you were forced to be independent because you didn't have a choice. You know, you didn't have anyone else to rely on. Your parents were gone or for whatever reason they weren't in your life. They didn't take care of you. Um, and so these emotions of feeling helpless and needing assistance and needing to surrender to a higher power and say, I don't have all the answers and I'm confused is going to feel very foreign to you. But at that moment when you do that, it's going to be, it's going to ignite something extremely powerful into your life and into your energy field, which is going to draw in your person like a magnetic flame. So keep that in mind, pile number one. Okay. So um, that's going to conclude your reading, pile number one. I hope you enjoyed it. And, you know, take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. I am going to be opening up readings again. Um, I, I haven't opened up readings in a really long time because I've been extremely busy with a new schedule and just catching up with, you know, other reads and stuff. And so I will be opening up readings again um, for what is my hair doing right now? It's so annoying. I will be opening up client reads again all of the readings are going to be one price just to make it easy they will be the same price it's going to be linked in my description box below um and everything i offer i'll put that in my description box once again so i am opening up readings um in order to get a reading this time you're going to have to email me and let me know exactly what type of reading you want and i will send you an invoice from paypal through your email and once that's done and you paid for the invoice, then I'll put you on my list depending on where where you fall in my list. Um, because depending on how many clients are booked ahead of you or vice versa. So then I'll email you and let you know about how long the wait time is. Okay. And then I will record your reading for you and send it to you through your email. Or you can message me on Instagram, direct message me. And let me know what type of reading you want and I can invoice you that way and we can go from there. Okay. I no longer have my website. Um, there was just too many issues with it. You know, uh, just it, it was just a mess. So the website's gone. This is a whole lot easier for me and also for you guys. So you can book a reading with me from the description box. I appreciate all of you who've kept me busy thus far. All right. And so thank you, pile number one. I love you. Okay, so we are going to move on to pile number two. Hi, pile number two. So we, what we're doing here is we're getting character traits of your person. Um, I think we're going to go in the same pile number one. All right, so we're moving on to pile number two. Can we get some character traits for pile number two? Character traits for pile number two, please. Character traits for pile number two. Character traits for pile number two, please. I may need to pull my hair up. I am so sweaty. It's ridiculous. Character traits for pile number two, please. I'm drinking tea. It's hot in here. I should have turned my air on, but I don't. I want you guys to be able to hear me. Character traits for pile number two, please. Character traits for pile number two. Character traits for pile number two. Character traits for pile number two, please. Wow, so your person is an absolute master at alchemizing their emotions. There is absolutely no fear in there in them about how to experience an emotion because they experience it. They transmute it, they alchemize it, they let it flow through them. Um, they instantly can recognize a negative emotion and turn it into a different emotion. They are very good at that. Okay. That one wanted to fly out, but it didn't, so we're not going to take it. 
Can we get one more card for pile two? All right, your person is also extremely patient. So that is a very beautiful trait to have. Um, they're very balanced. I see lots of twos here. So though they are extremely patient, they are also extremely passionate and fiery, which is an amazing trait to have. Um, because I sense that they're very balanced. So, you know, even though they have this um, passion, this fiery sort of fire sign passion energy to them, they don't let their, um, they don't let that fire control them. So, you know, this wouldn't be someone who has a temper, even though they're passionate and fiery. They would be someone who can recognize immediately when that emotion starts to come up. And they're very good at sort of turning that um, negative temper into a different emotion. Wow. Okay, so there's the Patience card. And there's the Alchemy card. Amazing. There's also a sense of like gracefulness to this energy, um, a sort of quiet thoughtfulness, if that makes sense. All right. Um, what other? All right. Can we get some more character traits for pile two, please? Character traits for pile two. Character traits for those that picked pile number two, please. Character traits for those that picked pile number two. What do we got for pile number two, please? Pile number two. Pile number two, please. Ooh, see, I told you, I said fire sign energy and we have Aries. I think I'm definitely going to pull my hair up. I am literally sweating and I just cannot take it anymore. Yeah, so we have Aries, which is fire sign energy. Can we get one more card for pile number two, please? Whoa, that one flew out. Let's get it. Mysterious. That's funny. I just said there was a sense of... Um, I just said there was a sense of sort of gracefulness and quiet thoughtfulness to this person. And literally, look, yes. So we have Aries, which is fire sign energy. And then we have Mysterious. So there's definitely some sort of quiet thoughtfulness, some holding back of, of things coming from this person. Sorry, I got an itch. Um... It's not that they're pers it's not that they're purposely trying to be mysterious. It's just that they're very thoughtful. And so they come across as very mysterious. They are the type of person that will like to um, think before they speak. And so they will analyze what they're gonna say in their head before they say it. If that makes sense. And so they come across as very mysterious, but really it's, they're just extremely thoughtful. Like they don't want to say the wrong thing. They don't want to say something that's going to hurt someone's feelings. And so they try to like sort of um, think before they speak. And which is, it's crazy because this is, this is Aries energy. I mean, it says Aries, right? But it's not Aries energy. Like most Aries fire signs are very quick tempered. They're very, um, not all, but they can be sort of ego driven if they're not spiritual. Um, the Aries males can be very angry and quick to temper. Um, and so the fact that this person is an Aries and yet they have learned to sort of, um, alchemize all of these emotions where they, they are not the typical characteristics of Aries. They are thoughtful. They're kind. They're patient. They have done a lot of inner work on themselves. This is someone who has done their spiritual work. Wow. I'm impressed. I'm impressed with their energy. I'm going to say. <laughs> 
Okay, so let's get some more character traits of your person, shall we? Let's see. All right, can we get more character traits for pile two, please? Some more character traits for pile two. Character traits for pile two. What are character traits of pile two's person? Can we get some character traits for pile two's person, please? <clears throat> what in the heck is going on with these cards? There's one. Whoa, see? Your person has definitely, they went through a lot. So they also have this very sort of Phoenix energy. They have had to be extremely strong. Sorry about any background noise. They're, the one of the character traits that came out for them is strength. So they have strength, which is one second. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue. Pile number two. All right, so your person has had to be strong. Um, they didn't have a choice. So that is why they would have... Um, extremely how do I put this that is why they would have um, sort of very strict and I don't want to say strict that's the wrong word but I guess that's that's how they would have gained their moral character um, they went through more things than the average individual so it sort of shaped their character into what you see now. So, you know, I would describe them as someone who has like um, very strong moral standards. They know what they like, they know what they want. Um, they have a very strong, kind, patient demeanor about them. Like I said, even though they are showing up as an Aries, they have learned to alchemize these negative emotions like, you know, anger, they've turned it into, you know, passion. Um, they've turned their impatience into patience. And it's because they went through a lot and they, it's, you know, like I said, it's, it's very scorpionic also as well. Um, very Phoenix type rising from the ashes type energy. And they have very, very, very strong spiritual beliefs. So they trust themselves. They trust the universe. They trust their path in life. Um, yeah, it's just, it's beautiful. All right. Did we get, yes, we got those cards. Um, what haven't we done? All right, let's go on to the Who Oracle and then we'll get some shadow traits of your person, just like things that you need to look out for, um, to help your person deal with their shadows. And then for those of you that have no idea who this person is, I will sort of give you timeline traits. Um, as to when you might run into this person in your timeline. Okay, so. Uh, character traits for pile number two, please. Character traits for pile number two. Character traits for pile number two. Those who picked pile number two, please. So I also just had a vision of a person laughing and they had a really great laugh so this might be something that you notice instantly about your person that when they laugh there is something about their laugh that you're gonna love like it's going to give you this instant feeling of like butterflies in your stomach you're going to you know 
maybe even say to them, you know, oh my God, I love your laugh. Pile number two. Okay, so we got petite. So your person is very tiny. <laughs> so they will be very short stature and very small bodied. So I get the feeling that right now I may be reading for a Divine Masculine counterpart, um, a Divine Masculine energy, and I'm probably giving you character traits of your Divine Feminine. Medium or dark hair. So your person has very dark hair. Well, it says medium or dark, so it could be like a medium brown, like this is an example of medium brown. I have um, medium brown hair, um, but I mean, in some spots it's it looks very much black. Um, but it, as you can see, comparing um, this hair is this is really dark, like black hair. And as you can see, my hair is a little bit lighter. As you can see, it's kind of got like shades of red, shades of brown. But I would consider this medium. Um, so that would be an example for those of you that are asking, like, what what does what is medium hair? Um, so it's it would be a, a, a shade of darker, but maybe with different colors. And then it says dark hair, so it would be you know jet black. So there's those character traits. Why don't we get one more for you? And then we'll go on to your shadow aspect of your person. Can we get one more character trait for pile number two, please? I think I got three for pile one. So can we get one more character trait for pile number two, please? Whoa, okay, that one flew out. All right, so you have 50s or older. So your person is a very seasoned person. So they would be in their 50s or older. You know, it's really... It's sort of ironic because you have 50s or older. So your person, they may legit be in their 50s or older than that. Um, or they might just be an old soul. However this fits in, if they say, for example, for those of you that are going to freak out and say, oh, my person is old. Okay. If this person is in their 50s or older and they still have jet black hair. That goes to show you right there, they definitely do not look their age, okay? I mean, we literally got medium or dark hair, so if they do have gray, it's very minimal. Like, I mean, it was it would be something you would barely even focus on or notice in your person. Um, I mean, I'm 42, and I always get the, you know, when people ask me how old I am, and I tell them 42, they literally go, what? <laughs> um... And I get the, oh my gosh, there's no way. And then, you know, they want to see my ID and it's ridiculous. And, or, you know, the, oh, I thought you were in your 30s or blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, if you could see, if you close up, like all the grays I have up here, you wouldn't say that. But my hair is so dark that, you know, it, I, it sort of gives off the illusion. And I'm very youthful. So, you know, I sort of give off the illusion of like being younger and I'm very, um, Although I'm an old soul, for sure. Um, I've had many, many lifetimes here. Uh, which is why I can, you know, give you guys all this unsolicited advice uh, for for love. But though I am an old soul, I I'm also have a very youthful energy. So, you know, I oftentimes find very young people attracted to me, like in their 20s and younger and I'm like mm, I am old enough to be your mother so it's just what it is all right so let's go on to the shadow aspects of your person you know and it's it it's not an ego thing like that's it's a literal <laughs> fact of my life my whole entire life um it's been extremely rare that Anyone over the age of 40 has found me attractive. It's always been, 
younger males in their 20s and early 30s. <laughs> so, <clears throat> all right, can we get some shadow traits for the people that picked pile number two, please? Shadow traits for pile number two. Thank you. Shadow traits for pile number two. Shadow traits, please. This thing is killing my knee. I need to move back a bit. Shadow traits for pile number two. Mmm, sucks. So, my knee is literally right in, in this table. I don't know why. It's leaving an indent in my knee. That was weird. My camera just got dark. And, but I want to be close enough to the table where I can shuffle and not have there be an issue. So it's a little bit of a tricky. Shadow traits for those that picked pile number two, please. Shadow traits. What are the shadow traits that they need to look out for, please? Shadow traits. Strife. So, though this person is very, very good at alchemizing their negative emotions, when they do cross that point of no return, when they get to that point where they are angry and they might feel like, I don't want to... Um, alchemize these emotions. I just want to let them fly. I want to release them for whatever reason. That's going to be the thing that literally might scare you. <laughs> so, um, though they are very good at controlling their emotions, I feel like if they decide to, and it, it would be a decision thing, it would be like, I'm, I'm going to let this person see my anger for whatever reason, because I do see that they're really good at controlling their emotions and sort of alchemizing their emotions. So by alchemizing, I mean turning those so-called negative emotions into a positive emotion. Though I see they're very good at doing that, I also see that if for whatever reason they decide to let those emotions loose on you because maybe you're, I don't know, maybe you're acting up, maybe they just want to vent and you actually see the power of their anger, I think that it will scare you. <laughs> um, because, you know, this is the card of strife. It's a card of arguments and anger. So I feel like if they ever decide to unleash any type of angry emotions on you, you will be like, whoa, where did that come from? And so that can be a shadow aspect. Um, I think that's why they have become so good at alchemizing their emotions because they know what their anger is capable of they this person in fact may have even gotten in trouble in the past for their fiery temper you know aries are known for having tempers so they may have literally in the past um they might have something there in the past that has dealt with anger maybe they you know were arrested for um hitting someone or you know losing their temper with someone maybe they got in a bar fight or you know they had um something a, a domestic violence charge because they you know push their spouse or some you know what I'm saying and I'm not I'm by not any means like condoning domestic violence but I'm saying like this would have been something that happened which catalyzed them into their change so for example if they did have some kind of domestic violence charge on their record because they lost their temper and maybe they struck someone their spouse or whatever and it went on the record and they spent time in jail because of it that would have been the catalyst that said hey i need i need to figure out these emotions why 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 did i do this what what is it that was triggered in me that caused such a violent reaction and that would have been the catalyst that started their introspective journey that would have been the catalyst that started their spiritual journey. That would have been what triggered them into becoming a different person. Becoming the person you see now. 
the one that has no problems controlling their emotions or alchemizing their emotions. So while we don't condone this, the, those type of behaviors, we do try to understand where those things come into play in our journeys, right? Okay. So, and obviously if they went through those alchemical processes, they would definitely not be someone that would be um, an abusive person after something like that. Just because someone has had some kind of experience like that where, you know, they were in jail for violence does not mean that this person is always going to continue to be violent. It means that they had something like that in their past. It changed them, made them who they are now. And now they're seen as patient, kind, loving, and all of those beautiful traits that comes with knowing your soul. Okay. So I just wanted to put that out there because there's going to be some of you on her judging and saying, oh, blah, blah, blah. So you're saying that they would be, you should be with someone who's had domestic violence in their past, blah, blah, blah. That's not even what I'm saying. This is completely different. All right. So, all right. That, um, so, and this, oh, hold on. This is a very confusing card. So, I think, I don't remember what this card is. Is this the world? I think this is the world card. Anyways, there's very Egyptian energy coming from this card. So, they've had, there is massive, massive energy here of this card from this card of rebirth and rebirth and rebirth and rebirth and rebirth and rebirth. So it really feels like because your person has had so many, um, so many upheavals and rebirths and tower moments and, um, Phoenix rising from the ashes moments. I mean, the, this is this is literally the most tower energy, rebirth energy, um, phoenix energy. I'm I'm feeling even, I mean even more than a scorpionic energy. And this you know this person came across as Aries, so they literally might have some Scorpio in their charts. I would be very surprised if they didn't. Um, but it feels like because they've had so many rebirths and had to start over so many times that a shadow aspect of theirs will definitely be this feeling of, of instability, this feeling of craving stability, this feeling of wanting to build some sort of stability in their life and almost a sort of resistance to change because they've had so much of it. <laughs> Does that make sense? So they want to create this sort of world um, for themselves, this world of stability and peace um i mean that literally on this card there's three um fetuses which is shows me massive rebirthing um thoth is on this card um i think that's Thoth. you know so that's like heavy um who old death rebirth um wisdom Egyptian energy of a very old soul who's, I mean, really your person is a master of this energy, but they, because of that, like they, they're really craving some sort of stability and they're a very wise old soul as well. Wow. They're very powerful spiritual energy coming off your person all right um it's incredible okay so let's give you some kind of timeline traits of 
when you can be looking out for this person. For those of you that know who this person is, then this the part of this portion of the reading is not for you. Just take what resonates. But for those of you who have not met this person and you want to look for these timeline traits, um, timeline traits, timeline um, hints, then this is going to be for you. So when you start, um, I'm just going to pull a card so that way you'll know what I'm talking about. You can look out for this on your timeline. Can we get a, a timeline hint for pilot number two, please? Uh, when this person might come into their life so that they can be looking for those traits, please. Again, there goes my knee again. I don't know why. I think I guess it, it would help if my kids didn't shove everything under this table and then I can't even put my feet down. It's ridiculous. There's so much stuff under this table and every time I clean it, it just gets shoved back under there. You know how it is when you have three. Storm morning. Bam. All right. So this could literally be a physical storm when you have like a huge, huge storm, whether it's a, um, a tornado, God forbid, a hurricane, something like that, a, tr um, a thunderstorm, something like that. Or it could literally be a um, some kind of emotional storm. So, for example, you're going through a emotional upheaval. There's a lot of emotional shifts and in your life, and it feels like a storm. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, things going on in your life that feel very dark, very storm-like, very chaotic. Then this is going to be the time that this person comes into your life. Or for some of you, it will it will be a physical storm. Like, for example, you will be in the middle of a huge thunderstorm. It's raining cats and dogs. You have to run out to your car for whatever reason. Um, or you're in a restaurant and you're like, crap, I have to go to my car. I'm going to be late for something. You know, you have to run out. It's raining crazy outside. And you're running. You're running in the rain. And bam, you run into someone. And you look up and it's, you know, the most beautiful woman you've ever seen in your life or the most beautiful masculine and your jaw just hits the floor and you're like, excuse me, I'm sorry. And, you know, there, there it is. So for some of you, it'll be a scenario like that. It'll be something um, like a physical storm that you guys will literally collide into each other and it, you'll be like, whoa, you know, or maybe, you know, for example, you're um, there's a tornado siren going off. So you run to the nearest, you know, storm shelter because you don't have one at home. And then you, you know, look up and there's this, you know, dark eyed stranger, you know, smiling at you and she's batting her eyelashes and you're like, Hey, so for some of you, it'll be like that. Um, so take it how it resonates. Everyone's story is going to be different. And that concludes your reading, pile number two. I hope you enjoyed it. We're going to move on to pile number three. Um, thank you. If you want to book a reading with me, I no longer have my website. So you're going to have to look in the description box below. All of my readings will be one price for now to keep things sort of um, easier. So I will not be doing the, the mini yes or no reads for like $30. I don't know, were they 30 I think they're they might be 44. I'm not going to be doing those right now because, you know, then I had to put different prices and my camera just glitched. So the process will be to email me or to DM me on Instagram. I will send you an invoice from PayPal using your email. Once you let me know what type of reading you want. And then once you pay, I will put you on the waiting list to let you know. And I will email you back and let you know email or message you back so that you know how far down you are on the list of clients of mine and you know I will go first come first serve so I will let you know about the wait time and if you still want to wait we'll continue if not then that's fine I can give you a refund doesn't matter um and then I will let you know the day before I record your video and I will send it to you through email or through Instagram whichever you prefer 
So that is how the readings are going to be booked for now. And like I said, I am opening up clients now. I, I was extremely busy, so I had to close down personal readings, but now I am accepting personal readings again. Um, for those of you that have kept me busy thus far, I appreciate you so much. Um, thank you for keeping me busy. <laughs> so we're going to open those readings up again. So you guys get your readings in while you can because you guys have been keeping me so busy. I haven't even had time to even make videos. So, all right. So thank you, pile number two. I love you. I hope you enjoyed your reading. Okay, pile number two. Pile number, I almost said tree. Pile number tree. <laughs> so for some of you, you are dealing with an earth sign or someone who's very grounded because I said, I was about to say pile number tree. So we're just gonna throw that out there right now. Pile number three, last but not least, we are going to be doing character traits of your person for you, pile number three, I need to adjust. Whew, this has been a long one. All right, so pile number three. Um, let's start out with, let's do this deck for you. Pile number three, character traits of pile number three's person. If you picked pile number three, we're going to get characteristic traits of your twin soul soulmates, Whatever you are looking for, there are no judgments here. Lover, whatever. <laughs> Character trait. And like I told all the other piles, this is going to be a collective energy read. So it's not going to be like a personal read. Some things will resonate, some won't. Take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Pile number three. Can we get some character traits for pile number three, please? Pile number three. Pile number three. Ooh, this is some loud shuffling. I love loud shuffling. Pile number three. Wow, your person has so many beautiful soul traits. They live from their soul. So this, right off the bat, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. I told some of the other piles the same thing. This feels very much twin soul. I just shook my whole camera because I just got excited. This feels very much twin soul, twin flame, mirror companion. Um, connection. Your person lives from their soul. They live from their soul. So they would be someone who knows their soul very well. Okay. Again, we got very heavy um, Piscean energy. There's a fish on this card. Um, you guys have definitely had past lives together in Lemuria. So yes, this feels very like your souls know each other. Um, if you look, there's she's a mermaid. Oh, and your person has a very beautiful sort of relaxed attitude. So, you know, they would be the type of person that someone would describe as like, they're very relaxed, like they're very chill. Um, I mean, they may even smoke pot, like <laughs> they're coming across as someone who's very relaxed. Um, you know, potheads tend to be very, very relaxed. And I'm not saying that they smoke pot and I'm not condoning <laughs> that either. I'm just saying their their vibe is very relaxed. So if it's not you know, the pot use that's relaxing them. They're very much into meditation, very much into like um, soul aesthetic, I like to call it. So like, you know, they would be a, a type of person probably surrounded by crystals and house plants in their home. Um, very sort of um, things that make them feel comfortable in their environment. So like a sacred soul space, okay? You know, tapestries, um, maybe Buddha statues. I'm just giving you examples of things that, because this person knows their soul so well, they know the things that makes their soul thrive. So they would be surrounded by, by things that speak of their soul. And you know, the soul loves comfortable things like nature, um, crystals, plants, 
um, anything that brings you comfort, pillows, um, you know, beautiful things like that, that speak of com creature comforts. So if you walked into their home, you would be impressed by like the luxury of the soul speak around them, you know? See, very chill, sort of relaxed type of energy. All right, so let's move on to the spirit deck. All right, so what does pile three need to know about their person? Can we get some more character traits for pile number three? What does pile number three need to know about their person? Other than they have a beautiful soul. <laughs> I almost flew up, but I didn't. Can we get two more character traits for pile number three? For those that picked pile number three, please. Two more character. I almost said three. Maybe we should do three. Two more character traits for pile number three, please. Okay. So we have a dark hair. So your person will have. So yes, your person would have what I would call, um, what I would consider dark hair would be like dark brown, dark black hair, right? Sorry, I didn't realize that video cut out there, so I hope. All right. One more card, please. Curly hair. So your person would have beautiful waves um, there's a difference between wavy hair and curly. I would consider my hair wavy, but I've I've had so many people say your hair is not wavy, it's curly. So I don't know, maybe it is curly. Anyways, um, I would consider curly hair something that's like extremely um, tight curls. So that's what I would be looking out for in your person. All right, um, let's do this stack. It says I only have five minutes left to record on this. So if it cuts out, I will get off and delete some videos and see if I can make some more space for you on here. Pile number three. All right. Pile number three. What do we got for pile number three? Can we get two traits for pile number three, please? one character traits for pile number three for those that ch chose pile number three Ooh. wow we have courage so your person is is basically they're fearless so if they've been through so much stuff in their life they have gotten the emotion of fear down pat. They don't let their, um, they don't let those old belief systems of fear hold them back. They're very much, um, you know, I'm going to conquer this even if I'm afraid type energy. You know, they're not afraid to put themselves out there. Okay. You also have beauty. So your person is very aesthetically pleasing. They might be extremely beautiful, extremely handsome. Um, I'm getting a sense of like... They might do something like if this is a divine masculine um, and you're watching this for a divine feminine, a character trait I would give you for her would be very like serpentine, if that makes sense. So, for example, she would do something like belly dancing or some other type of very sensual um, type dancing. I, I don't know how else to explain it. Um, maybe even pole dancing, something like that. Something where the body moves sort of like in a this type of movement, if that makes sense. Um, third eye, wide open. Your person is definitely an awakened individual. 
Um, I'm getting a very like wizard or witchy vibe as well. So keep that in mind. Huh. Okay. One second. Okay. Sorry about that pile number three. I had to empty out the trash on my phone to finish a reading. So let's continue. All right. So let's go ahead and move on to, um, actually let's do the shadow aspects of your person and then we'll move on to the who Oracle and then I'll give you a little timeline hints of when you can meet your person. Okay. All right. So let's do the shadow traits that, um, pile number three's person has. I'm tapping now into the energy of the shadow traits of pile number three's person, please. Whoa. So their energy might be a little bit scattered. Um, I just all, almost lost all of the cards. So tapping into their energy field right away, I feel this sort of like <laughs> scattered type ungrounded energy, if that makes sense. All right. Pile number three shadow aspects of their person why is my hair doing this thing right now it's so annoying to me this is what see this is why i don't like to be in front of the camera because i overanalyze everything <laughs> whereas like when i'm not in front of the camera i can just focus on what i'm doing and not on what my hair is doing Okay, so your person, a shadow trait coming up for your person is they might be very rash and sort of, um, they have a tendency to leap before they look, I guess is what you want to, what I want to say. They might be impulsive. Okay. Um. They might get into things before they fully think them through. It's very, you know, fire sign type energy. So they might have fire in their chart as well as, you know, the water aspects of their chart. One more shadow trait. So beware of that and sort of impulsive recklessness. Um, wealth is also coming out as a shadow so they might have a tendency to be greedy. They might have a tendency to want to hoard things or, you know, um, they might be, you might consider them as someone who likes to hoard um, financial wealth. They might, you know, do that because it's, it's a shadow aspect of feeling lack. They may have came from... Um, a family who lacked a lot financially and so therefore they feel that sense of security when they put you know money aside for a rainy day so this could be you know considered um, that feeling of lack and it is coming across as a shadow so you know people might even call them like cheap or thrifty this would be someone I would describe like that um, so they might have a lot of wealth, but they might have it stored away and not want to use it for things. Um, and, and once again, it's coming across as they are like this because they came from nothing. So, and I'm not to say that their parents were like, you know, super dirt poor, but they didn't have much. And so they would have, you know, came from that background and think, oh, well, I'm going to put aside tons of money just in case I need it. So even though they might be financially secure, they might constantly always worry about not being financially secure. And so that will come out as a shadow because they have that fear of losing um, things that they've accumulated. So, you know, so that could be an aspect of their fear. Even though it they are coming across as courageous, that might be one of their shadow fears that they are facing right now at this moment. Um, so they wouldn't, 
though they're coming across as like this reckless type energy, sometimes we're not thinking things through. Um, it, they, that would not bleed over into their money. Like, you know, they might be impulsive when it comes to other things, but I definitely do not see that going across in their financial aspect. They would be someone who is very cautious about their money, where they might not be cautious about other things. They're definitely cautious about their money. Um, so it's coming across as very Taurian energy, very earth sign. Um, I was just trying to listen to see if there was any more messages coming through. So, you know, they probably do have a lot of money stored in the bank. Um, you might, you know, start dating them and then realize that, you know, they, they have a huge stash of, of money or stocks tucked away that you had absolutely no idea about and find out later on and go, what? Like, why? Do you? Or they might, you know, stock up on, on different things. It could be like physical things. Like they have a stock of, of shampoo and, you know, toothpaste or socks that they you know, put in like a storage closet and you'll stumble upon it one day and go, why do you keep this stuff? And it's because they were used to going without certain things. And so therefore they will put this stuff away so that they don't have to worry about being in that, that, that lack state. So hope that makes sense. Okay. Um, we are going to do some who oracle to give you some more character traits about your person and um then we will give you some timeline hints and we're going to call this a reading all right so what do we got for pile number three's person traits pile number three if you picked pile number three what are the traits of their person can we get three cards, personality traits of pile number three for those who picked pile number three? Pile number three, please. Three traits. We have petite. So your person was is of small stature, very tiny. So you're probably a divine masculine and your person is probably a divine feminine or it could be, I mean, it could be vice versa, but I don't see a lot of petite men out there. So, you know, it's, you're probably a divine masculine and you probably picked pile number three about your divine feminine. Whoa. Not to say that there's not petite men out there. You just don't see as much as, you know, Petite Divine Feminines. All right, fair complexion. Yes, I think we're definitely reading for a Divine Masculine. So your feminine would probably be very petite, very fair complexion, very Snow Whitish. <laughs> Beautiful skin. So she would be the type of person that, you know, and I'll say he or she because it's that, yeah, I guarantee you that I'm reading for a Divine Masculine, but it feels like I am. Um, but, um, so this would be the type of person that when people see them, they say, oh, you have such beautiful skin. Like your complexion is so beautiful and, you know, it'd be blemish free and very, um, very, very beautiful skin. So they might have an extensive skin regime too. Um, usually though, I mean, people always ask me what I use on my skin and I don't use anything on my skin that people expect me to say, Oh, I have this like great beauty regime. Like I put on exfoliation and witch hazel and a sunscreen and, and I don't, I literally, you know what I do? I don't even use soap on my face because everything just sort of dries my face out. So I literally will take a washcloth dampen it with warm or hot water and rub it in my face and that's that's my skincare routine honestly so i get asked it all the time when i'm out so if that's what you're wondering that's what i do that's literally what i do i don't use soap i don't use anything 
All right, so we have fair complexion. We also have thin body. So again, this ties into the petite. Petite, tiny. Um, your person is probably very health conscious. They might, you know, eat um, a diet of, they might be like a raw vegan or a vegetarian, someone who only eats raw foods, um, you know, someone who's very health conscious. Maybe they work out a lot. Um, they're probably very active. They're probably not a big eater. So it's definitely not me because I love me some food. I'm just saying. Okay, so let's give you some timeline traits. Um, why do I keep saying that? I don't know. Let's give you some timeline hints of when you could possibly meet this person. So for those of you that have already met your person, this portion will not be for you. For those of you who have not met your person and you want to get some timeline hints as to when this person will bleed into your timeline, I'm going to give you that answer right now. Okay, so let's go into some timeline aspects of when not pile number three will run into their person. What is the timeline of this event of when they will run into the love of their life? I love being a love reader, FYI. Ooh, truth. So, bam. So, this could be a few different things. This could be at a time when you discover something harsh about someone or about yourself. This could be a time when you're literally going through a legal matter, as in like a divorce. Um, I don't know. It, there's something about the truth. So, it could be a time when you have something that happens and it's like bam you have extreme clarity you discover something huge about yourself or about someone else um you know this this the energy is very justice very libra so like i said it could be when some of you for some of you it'll it'll be when you're excuse me literally going through like some kind of legal battle it could be like a custody battle a divorce something along those lines um, because, you know, truth is, is Libra energy. So to me, it's always um, sort of the scales, which to me represents legal issues, legal battles, things of that nature. So it could be um, somewhere along that time. So for example, if you're going through a divorce, it could be, you know, right around this time that you're going through this, or say you're going to, you know, a custody battle to, you um, try to fight your spouse for custody of your children it'll be around that time that you're going to court for that or thinking of filing for full custody when you will meet this person okay because there's something about truth and justice in this whole energy timeline of when this person will come into your life so if it's not with literal legal battles then it'll be a time where like you have something really crazy is revealed. So for example, um, you discover, um, I don't know, maybe your best friend will come out and say, hey, I'm gay. And you'll be like, holy crap, like this is a huge clarifying truth about you that I never knew. Or maybe, you know, um, it'll be, and I'm just giving you examples. Um, you know, you'll discover that your best friend has an, a, a big crush on you and they never told you, you know, or, you know, maybe you're, um, I don't know, just, I'm just giving you examples of, of like big, huge truth clarifying things, you know, that you'll discover. And it could be even something small, like maybe you discover, you know, that you always were a people pleaser and then all of a sudden you wake up one day and go, well, I'm, I don't want to be that anymore. I, you know, I discovered about myself that I'm a people pleaser and now that I realize that I'm not going to do it anymore. And so you, you completely, therefore, completely change, you know, your attitude and your perception, which completely changes this timeline. And, you know, where you were once like kissing people's asses, now you're like, ah, oh, fuck you. So, you know, <laughs> and now all of a sudden it, you know, everything shifts for you because you're standing in your power. So it could be something like that too. Either way, there's going to be a huge truth that's revealed. There's going to be a moment of clarity for some of you. For some of you, it'll be a literal legal issue. And, you know, this is when your person will come into your timeline. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this reading. Pile number three. I love you guys so much. I am opening up readings, personal readings, once again. 
Um, I have been extremely busy. For those of you that have kept me busy, I'm so grateful for all of you. Um, but I am now opening up personal readings. So it's going to go like this. You will email me or you will direct message me on Instagram. Let me know. Please already know what you want. And everything that I offer will be in the description box. And it's going to be one set price for everything. So I'm not doing the yes or no questions. Those are the only ones that are a different price. Um, and, and I'm not going to be doing the group tarots. Those are a different price as well. Everything, everything that I offer will be on there. The group parties and the yes or no questions will not be on there because I'm not offering those at this time. Um, so I'm only accepting personal readings. There will be a set price for all of those. You will message me, let me know what you want, and I will put you on my waiting list depending on how how many clients I have lined up. So it's going to be first come, first serve. I will email you back with the invoice from PayPal, and PayPal is the only thing I accept. Oh, I do accept Cash App, but I can't send you an invoice from there, so you know it's a little bit different. Um, so you can you can pay me on there, but there's no way for me to really keep track of that. So. Um, so cash app PayPal, but I will invoice you from PayPal, um, or cat, you know, if you want to send it through cash app, that's okay. Um, but I will email you and let you know how far you are down the line. If there's anyone in front of you, if there's not, then I'll book you right away. Um, and then I will also email you or message you right before I record your reading. So that way I can let you know about when it's going to be done and I will send it to your email or to your Instagram, whichever you prefer. So that is going to be the process now for um, booking me for a personal reading. Um, I'm also going to try to go live and do mini reads for a donation. They The donation minimum will start at $10. That'll be the minimum that you can donate to me. and. It'll go up from there depending on how many cards you want me to draw for you. So I'm going to be doing that really soon, either on Instagram or on Facebook. So stay tuned. So I think that's about it. That's going to be the process for readings from now on. I was having some problems with my website. And so I just decided to say screw it and make this much easier on me and also on you and just go back to the way I was doing it before. So I hope you enjoyed this reading, you guys. I love you so much. Thank you all for your support, your likes, your shares, and your subscriptions. You guys are amazing. I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you. You guys are the heart and soul of my channel. I love you.